Hi, welcome back. We're going to be talking about confidence intervals. How do we build them? And what's all those exact things that we need to include? So stay tuned. Hi, I'm Aaron Hayes. We just got done going through an experience about how we can build confidence intervals and the four steps we need to do it. We're going to formalize it here in a second. We're also going to talk about that ever elusive, if I need a confidence interval that's exactly this size, how big is my sample space going to be? So let me get to the right screen and get going. So all of this can be found through Statsmatic. I've got links down below um, for that. Uh, while you're down there, make sure you hit like, subscribe. If you have any questions, go ahead and comment. Um, I'm more than happy to go ahead and answer those as we go through them. I also have some goofy stats merch that I'm starting to mess around with, stickers, et cetera. So feel free to check those out either on Redbubble. So or the four steps that we went through and did in the previous lesson, and again, the link to that's below. I'll link it here at the end is we need to go through and the first step is state. You need to say what you're trying to find and how confident you want to be at it. So in this case here, you would say, I'm trying to find P, the true proportion of blank, and where you're doing it to a 95% confidence level. We also need to plan what we're going to do. Now for planning, there's certain criteria that need to be met. So you're going to name what you are doing. You also need to meet your conditions. So you need to show that it's random so we can expand, extend it to the general population. We need to know independence so we don't have to worry about replacing things. So all the stats are going to, we can use the correct um, statistics that we need to for the formulas that in this case, in the also needs to be normal. So we can use the Z tables, the Z formula and things like that. After that, we get to do this. Now the doing is the most involved part. There's four parts to it. You need to write down the general formula. So in this case, just point of interest plus a margin, plus or minus margin of error. We're also going to go through and talk about the specific formulas. If for some reason you forget to name or exactly what the name is for um, the test or the interval that we're doing, oftentimes if you write down the correct formula, that should be enough that you can get most of the credit on the test. Um, not having read it before, I get a little fuzzy on that, so obviously put as much as you in, in as you can, but putting down the correct formula will save you. And again, that's also usually on the formula sheet that's in the test itself that you have while you're taking the exam. You need to plug in all the numbers that you have so you can show how those go in. So, you know, what is gonna be your P hat? What is your N value, et cetera? And then you need to come up with your final answer. And then just like a good essay, we're going to conclude. So you're going to interpret in context what you are doing. So we are 95% confident that the true proportion of pigs that are over 100 pounds falls between this and this. Okay, that type of thing. Now, choosing your sample size. When polling places, et cetera, are trying to do surveys, they want to have like a plus or minus of 2%. So what this will do is this. We're gonna use this formula here for margin of error. Margin of error is equal to your Z star score times the square root of P hat times one minus P hat. So again, success times failure, all divided by N. The only thing is, however, is that we are solving for n, so we're going to get that by itself. It's basic algebra, but since it's in the denominator, just you need to go a little bit slower. I'll do an example here so you can see in a little bit. Now, the other thing that you have to remember in the back of your head is this. You're always going to round up. The reason why you're always are going to round up is this. If I have, there's my p-value, and I want to have 95%. Okay, and let's say my 95% margin of error is equal to 3.4 mangoes. Okay. If I round that down, so this is plus 3.4, this is minus 3.4, that's going to hit me right here at the parentheses, right? If I round this down to 3, that is inside those two parentheses, which means that since this is 95%, I should probably do that in blue. Since that's 95%, the red one is going to be less than 95%, which means that we're not capturing, we don't do it. So what's, what we do is we round up. So if we rounded that up to four, we're going to be a little bit wider than what we need. And that's gonna be bigger than 95%. But then we can be sure that 95% of our intervals will capture the true interval. Um, the other thing that we need to go through and do 
is this. If p hat is unknown, you're going to do 50-50. There's two ways to think about it. If we don't know what p is, the worst, quote unquote, thing that could happen is that both sides have an equally likely chance of happening. 50% win, 50% lose. 50% success, 50% failure. If it's higher than that, great. The reason why we worry about 50-50 is this. The base, best way, the biggest area you can get with the same perimeter is always going to be a square. So if I have a perimeter of 40, so P equals 40, go back to geometry here, my area here is going to be 10 times 10 or 100. As soon as I get smaller than that and I change the dimensions, look what happens. I get a smaller rectangle even if it's 9 and 11. So it'd be 9, 11, 9, 11, still 40 all the way around. Now my area is 99. So by choosing 50-50, it is going to be the most conservative option. And so what ends up happening is when you're presenting this finding, you're going to say this is going to be the most conservative plan. It may be better than that. That's the reason, reason why we round up, because that way we're guaranteed. We have a better chance of making sure we're capturing things. And then we're also going to be making sure that by going 50-50, if we don't know P hat, if we have an idea of P hat, we can always use that. But if we don't know P hat, we're going to play it conservative. So then that way we know the worst possible option. Now, down below is some check your understanding. Pause it here, run through some of that, and I will show you how to do it here in a second and we can check your work. All right, welcome back. I hope you gave it a shot. So the problem here is this. Um, you want to do a customer survey thing. Your manager says, hey, I want to have it be within three percentage points. How do you set this up? So we're going to use a conservative estimate. So if, well, a couple of things first. First of all, we want to do blah, 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 blah. We want to proportion of customers who are satisfied. So that's going to be our context. We want um, the estimate to be within three percentage points. And we also want a confidence level of 95%. All right. So again, what we're going to do first is that we want a 3% margin of error. Our margin of error, remember, at 95%, that is going to be 1.960 for a Z star score. So I'm going to take 1.960. I'm going to multiply that by, now since we're doing conservative and we have no idea of how many customers are actually happy, we're going to go 50% times 1 minus 50% all over N. We're leaving in there because that's what we're solving for. Okay. Now, when you go through and do this, again, you can go straight from here into your answer, but obviously you may want to write some of this out. So I'm going to just do a little scratch pad here. So the way that we go through and do this, remember, we have this 1.960. And then 0 0.5, and that's going to end up being 0 0.5 squared over n. So when I do that, I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides through by 1.960. And then we're going to square both sides. Remember, square everything. And so I've got 0, 3 over 1.960 squared is equal to 0.5 squared over n. Now, a couple of things to remember. Remember, with you could cross multiply this if you wanted to. Um, proportions, you can go ahead and swap corners. Um, so you've got a couple of different options here. The biggest thing that I would say to do is just make sure that you don't try to punch everything into your calculator all at once. That usually seems to be the part that throws most people. So I can just even simply trade corners. So I could say n is going to end up being 0.5 squared divided by 0.03 divided by 1.960 squared. I would probably do this bottom part separately, hit squared, and then do that. Anyway, regardless of what happens, pause there if you need to see that. This is going to turn out to become um, n is going to be, and you're going to have five, one, or 1,067. 0.11 people. Now, again, remember, we said that we're always going to round that up. Because if we go down to 1067, we're going to be less than 95%. So we're going to go bigger. So we're going to say that is 1,068 people.
Now, prior year survey, they say they found that 80% of the customers were satisfied with what was going on. So that would be an appropriate P hat value to have. So we're going to go through into the exact same math, the exact same way. The only difference, however, is that we are going to change our P hat to become 80%, which means that our failure rate is going to be 20%. And again, we're going to solve for N. Same process as we did before, and that is going to give you an N value of uh, what was it? 68295, which means that we're going to round that to 683 people. So just by having that little bit, changing it from 50 to 80%, we cut our, I mean, 40% of the people that we have the survey out. So you can see why finding that P hat's important, because that's going to save you time and money in terms of administering the survey. Now, if the company president comes back and wants a 99% confidence interval instead, what would change? You know, would you need a smaller or larger sample size? This is a beautiful type of multiple choice question. So let's set this up and we'll talk about it. So I've got 2.576 for my Z star value. I'm going to go back through here and I think we're intending it to say, yeah, okay, we're intending it to be the top point over there. Um, 80 times 20 divided by n. So notice here, um, if you think about what's going on, my Z star is getting larger. And if that's getting larger to get to the 3%, that means that this has to get smaller. Well, how's the only thing I can get that smaller? Well, I need to divide by a larger number. So it kind of makes sense if I'm going from a 95% confidence interval. Remember, since we're adding, I mean, the, your sample size um, increases your standard error. So what, in, or it can, affect your standard error, excuse me. So if I want more, if I want this bigger, I need to, if I want to make sure I have it up, you can do one or two different things. Either we can take more space or we need to increase the sample size. Since our space is staying the same here, the only way we can do it is to increase the sample size. So again, you're going to go ahead and solve this the normal way like we did up above. This is going to go off and give you an N value, a very similar to what we had before. The first one, 879. How's that for a save? So we're going to say 1,180 people. And then, in terms of explaining your answer, so a larger sample will reduce the standard error to help offset the larger z score value. to keep 3%. Hi, so that's confidence intervals. Before we go, a couple of things that can help me with this. If you click over here, you can subscribe to my channel so you can see all the latest updates that I do with um, the stats curriculum. If you click over here, this is the experience video that we did before this in terms of how we threw a beach ball around to figure out how much water is on the earth. Again, subscribe, comment down below. If you have any questions, please let me know. We'll see you next time.